Thank you so much for the kind introduction. And uh, thank you all for coming. I know it's the last session of the day and uh, the raffle already happened, so I uh, really appreciate you all coming here. Um, so, you know, if you're familiar with, uh, with Mesosphere and, and um, you know that Spark is, you know, one of the things that run on top of Mesos, um, what many people don't know is actually that Spark originally was uh, built as a demo for Mesos. Uh, that's how it originated, it came from the AMP lab in Berkeley, just like Mesos did. Um, so just a little fun fact. So I, I wanna, you know, Spark was one of the first applications that ran on top of Apache Mesos, which is the core for the product that we're building at uh, Mesosphere, which is called DCOS. Um, but I, what I wanna talk about today is how you build a full IoT pipeline or map, you know, an example of that being a mapping platform using Spark Kafka Elastic and running it all on top of DCOS. That's me, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, so to build, a, to build a, an application, like an IoT application or a, a real-time mapping application, uh, what we need in the background is really we need a way to process real-time events. And, and if we do a quick look at uh, so the history of big data, we, we started many years ago with Hadoop um, doing batch processing, right? Where the sizes of the batches were in the order of days or maybe hours, and the things we did, of course, you know, it originated at Google, so they indexed the web with that. Uh, other folks were doing billing, chargeback, you know, things that took um, days or, or weeks or they did it once a month. And so over time, we got more real time it went into micro batches, right? So where those batches are in the order of minutes or even seconds. Uh, the products that were built around that are things like product recommendations um, or things like uh, predicting pricing and routing at uh, products like Uber. And, and then it, it, came in, uh, it went into real-time event processing. So the difference there is really where when you're doing batch, you're trying to describe what already happened. Uh, whereas when you, you're doing stream processing, um, a lot of those applications are actually using that real-time data to predict what's gonna happen next. And uh, one of those examples is uh, what you see on, on iPhone now where you have a predictive user interface, right? And, and so that, that journey going from batches that last the, the size of days or weeks or months to now doing real-time event processing in the microseconds, uh, you can kind of see that journey in, in how Spark evolved too, right? It started with batch, then micro batch, and now we have a real streaming engine behind it. So hyperscale, building hyperscale applications like a big mapping application means volume, so big data, and velocity. You also need to process this stuff in real time. Now, if you're building a, a real-time mapping application or, or really any IoT application, um, there is a couple more components you need around Spark to build that. And the pattern that's emerging there is, uh, is called the SMAC stack. The S stands for Spark. And um, let me talk about the other components. So the pipeline starts on the left. You have event sources. So those could be sensors, IoT devices, you know, things built into cars or planes or whatever. Those could be mobile devices or those could just be web clients, right? Your users producing data in real time. So you have all these event sources and, and, and some of the largest applications in the world that are doing this, they have events coming in on the order of millions per second. So you need a way to ingest this many events in a robust way. And that data is, of course, valuable, so you want something that's highly available that doesn't lose your data, doesn't throw it away. And the infrastructure software that's emerging there as the, you know, the winner is, is Apache Kafka. That's the K in SmackStack. So now you have the data in a safe place. Kafka you know, keeps it and uh, replicates it. You can use Spark to do the real-time analytics, right? To process that stream of data, apply a windowing function, do some you know, summary statistics on it, whatever it is that you need to do for your application. So based on what you learn from that real-time stream of data, you need to store those results. And so the, since the data that's coming in is time-based, a time series database makes a lot of sense. And the one that um, is part of the SMAC stack is Cassandra. It's a time series database and it's large scale. It can handle the volume of data. So that's the C in SMAC. All right, so now you've processed your data in real time. You've learned something. The last bit here is you need to build an application that serves the data back to the user. And um, 
you know, that's typically done with an event-driven application framework like Akka, the A in Smack, that you can use to build applications that react to changes in the data in real time. And the last letter of Smack, that's the M, that's of course Mesos as the platform to run all these pieces. So that's the Smack stack. So if you were to set up something like the Smack stack using your traditional IT approach, uh, what you would do is you would set servers aside, whether those are physical servers in your own data center or virtual machines on the cloud, and each of the servers uh, serves one purpose, right? You have a set of machines for Spark, set of machines for Kafka, and all the other pieces. So that's sort of the naive or old school IT approach, and that leads to a lot of problems. Um, first of all, your utilization is not very high. Uh, industry average, you're only using you know, 10 or 12 to 15 percent off the compute on those machines. That's not a lot. Uh, the other challenge with this is you have to typically create different oper oper uh, operational procedures for each one of those services. If you're running a very large infrastructure, you might even have different groups, different teams of people operating each one of those apps with different tools, not talking to each other. Um, so it's hard for people to move around and, and, and to standardize on how to operate these things. So here's the, the DCOS approach to solving this problem. So DCOS has a scheduler that schedules all the pieces of the Smack stack or any other container or data service you want to run and basically multiplex all the, multiplexes all these different tasks onto the same nodes. So it does basically bin packing of all your application components until those servers are fully utilized. So you can see you know, on the different colors, we, you might have servers that are running Spark jobs as well as your user-facing applications or Spark jobs as well as your databases or your Kafka brokers. So there's automated schedulers that do that work. It drives up the utilization. You have one way to run all these applications from DCOS. And, um, and you use your, your hardware more efficiently. You also move away from this model of building silos, right? No, there's no human that has to decide Spark goes onto this machine, Kafka goes onto the other machine, Cassandra goes onto the third machine. It's all automated, so you don't have to think about these problems anymore. The way we do this uh, in DCS is with a model that we call a two-level scheduler. So you may be familiar with other container orchestrators that um, are really built for running microservice-based applications in containers. Uh, that's on the right. So they have a monolithic scheduler that was built for this purpose. And you know, they're, they're really good at, at running your stateless containers. But for all these other data services that you need to back your stateless applications, they're not a good answer. You still have to you know, figure out how to operate Cassandra using a standard container orchestrator, or you have to run them without a container orchestrator on, on separate infrastructure. And then you have the same problems that I described earlier, again. So the DCOS approach is to um, use a two-level scheduling model instead. So we separated the problem into two. You have uh, in what we call the kernel, that's Apache Mesos. Um, that scheduler is responsible for resource management, so it makes sure that all the applications you want to run, all the Smack stack components, whatever else it is that you want to run, that they get the resources that they need. So for example, you may have a Spark job that does machine learning, and you want to leverage GPUs for that to speed up those jobs. So the scheduler can give you those GPU resources for your Spark jobs. Other parts of the stack that you're running, say your microservices, they can't really use GPUs, so they'll get scheduled on machines with just general purpose CPUs, not GPUs. So that's the resource management. And then on top of that, we have the second level of schedulers. And in DCOS, those can be purpose-built for your workload. So they are workload-aware schedulers. And for every one of the pieces of the Smack stack, there's actually a separate scheduler. So there's one for Spark, one for Cassandra, one for Kafka, and so on. And the difference there is that, that they, have, they are aware of how to run Kafka, Cassandra, and so on in a production-grade way. What to do when hardware fails underneath, how to upgrade them, how to change configuration without interrupting service, without losing data. So that's the big difference here. So now let's talk about the, the example of building a you know, mapping application. And uh, in this case, it's a, it's a real-time car tracking application. Um, 
the stack kind of looks like this, so it's, um, it's almost a smack stack. Uh, so you can see a couple of Spark jobs running on every one of those agents. Um, they do real-time analytics functions, processing the events that are coming in. Uh, you can also see there's some Spark batch analytics jobs running on those same machines. Um, you can see there's some Kafka jobs also scheduled that, um, you know, Kafka being the message queue that processes all the incoming events. And um, you know, Cassandra is not here in this example. It's Elasticsearch. Um, like I said, all the components of the, the Smack stack are also swappable. So, uh, so this app just uses Elasticsearch in, instead of Cassandra. And so as you can see, you know, those tasks uh, share the same underlying hosts and, um, you know, to drive up the utilization of those machines. And it's all managed via DCOS. So what this application is doing is actually um, it's ingesting data from taxis moving around in New York City. Um, you know, we'll look at a simulation where that, that data is just produced by an app uh, to simulate those cars. And then um, we'll see those moving around uh, on, an, on a map and uh, all those pieces are running on DCOS. So the data flow looks like this. Um, if you remember the graphic I showed earlier with um, the Smack stack components, you have an event source. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's just a simulation in this case, but it goes into Kafka, the message queue. Then we use Spark to do uh, the data analytics. It gets stored into Elasticsearch, and then you have a JavaScript application in the end that reads the data from Elasticsearch and serves it back to the user. Now let's look at the demo. So this is DCOS, and you kind of see an overview of your, your data center, the total amount of CPU and memory that's available and allocated in the data center across the different machines. And, uh, you know, right now it's, you know, there's some jobs running in the data center. We can look at CPU, memory, and disk usage across the data center. Um, the universe is kind of like an app store. It's part of DCOS, and this is where you can install this Mac stack components, Cassandra, Kafka, Spark, and so on. If you just want to try things out, you can actually install them with a single click of a button, just accept the default configuration. There's also an advanced install where you can tune all the parameters, like you know, run a larger Cassandra cluster, more memory, more disk, more, more CPU per node, and uh, as well as configuration that's specific to those services. Um, Elasticsearch, uh, you, can, you, know, you can see all the different tasks running for Elasticsearch. We can scale it up. So that's an important uh, feature of, of uh, DCOS as well. If you need to scale up any of these components, uh, that's very easy. Uh, you can look at Kafka in the UI. You see the different brokers of Kafka running across different nodes. Uh, there's also a CLI that lets you interact with DCOS itself, as well as the Smack stack components. So you can see there's a subcommand for Kafka that lets you do Kafka-specific things, like tell you the host names of the different brokers uh, so you know how to connect to them from your applications. And, you know, there's a series of other commands to interact with DCOS. So Marathon is the microservice container orchestrator. So, so here you can see a number of different microservices that, that power this application, um, that serve different, you know, map tiles for the, for the application. Again, they're all running on the same nodes that also run Spark and all the other Smack components. Here we're starting more uh, of the, uh, they're called RATS, so real-time analytics tasks. So those are actually the, the Spark jobs that process the data coming in from Kafka. Very easy to start those from the command line. And it's just a JSON config file that, uh, that you know, tells it how to launch those. So each one of those uh, RAT jobs has actually different tasks. So you can, if you look at the IPs, they run on different hosts in the cluster. And those are all running in Docker containers. I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit since we're almost out of time. So I want to show you what the actual application looks like. So um, you know, it's a map, and you can you can zoom in. Um, you know, every different zoom level, it you know behind the scenes, this front end app needs to go back to Elasticsearch, run a different kind of query to uh, to retrieve the the map data at that zoom level. You can also switch the, the tile shape. So that's, you know, if you remember, the, there was a hexagon service that you saw earlier that's serving those, those hexagon tiles. And as you zoom in, you can see 
things happening even at street level. So again, that's another a different, different type of query behind the scenes. And I'll stop there since we're, since we're out of time. Um, but to sum it up, building a real-time analytics pipeline for IoT or real-time mapping or whatever your use case is um, requires a lot of uh, components uh, that are hard to operate and hard to run. Um, but DCS makes it really easy to run these components, gives you a public cloud-like experience to start any of these components and manage them. Um, the difference being you can run them on any, any infrastructure with that public cloud-like experience, whether you're actually on AWS or another cloud provider or in your own data center. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Um, since this is the last session of the track, we'll take one question. Anyone has a question? Do you want to come up to the mic, please? Hi. Uh, does that the component that you, you showed, uh, is that uh, the specific, like a modified version of on top of Mrs. Peer or like common version of like uh, Kafka or the other components? So, so the, um, th is the, the question which, uh, if, if those uh, Kafka and Spark and those components, of, if those are Mesos for specific yeah. packages? So th we, we take, uh, vanilla, off-the-shelf Kafka and Spark. We don't modify that software itself. What we do is we add on a scheduler that knows how to operate it and then package those two things together. And that's what you get in the universe. So um, the Spark that you get is the same, you know, Apache Spark that you would get online. Mm -hmm. um, if, if there's more questions, uh, unfortunately we're out of time, but um, you know, I'll, be, I'll be outside or, or in the back so you can ask me some more questions there as well. Thanks very much.